Hi there, I am Taylor Jackson here on Adorama TV to talk to you all about Sony cameras and lenses for wedding photography. So over the past couple of months, I've been doing a series with Adorama over on my channel where we talk about everything from budget lens options to the best available products to take the best wedding images possible. Today on Adorama TV, I'm going to be taking you through all of the lens options as well as the camera bodies. We're gonna do lenses first and we're going to move in to cameras later. And if you wanna know a little bit about me, uh, I have been a wedding photographer for years and years and years now. I have photographed over 1,000 weddings in my career in a variety of different places, situations. I feel like I've encountered pretty much everything you can encounter when it comes to wedding photography. And because of that, I feel like I'm qualified to give you the best information. My favorite lens of all time for wedding photography is a recent addition, and it is the Tamron 35 to 150 F2 to F2.8. As the name suggests, this lens starts at 35 and goes all the way to 150. So you can get those wide shots as well as tight close-ups all with one lens. It is a variable aperture lens, which means it begins at F2 when you're at 35 millimeters. And as you zoom in with the lens, you eventually end up at F2.8 at the 150 millimeter end. Throughout this entire range, regardless of the f-stop, the lens just looks wonderful. If I could only choose one lens for a wedding day, it would be this lens. However, you need backups, so you need a second lens. Also, it's kind of heavy, and it's a little bit intimidating. So if you walk into a getting ready environment and you have a big lens and a big camera and you're the new person in the room and no one's ever met you before, it's gonna take people a minute to warm up. The easier way to enter a room and get people to being as normal as possible, as fast as possible, is to start off with the 35 millimeter F1.4. I love to have this lens on my camera, not only for wedding photography, but it is also my go-to travel lens. So if I'm only picking one lens to go out there in the world with, it is going to be the 35 millimeter F1.4 GM. And that might sound crazy because it's a prime lens, it's not a zoom lens, but I am an absolute huge fan of the 35 millimeter F1.4. Next, moving into a newer edition, the Sony ecosystem. It is the Sony 50 millimeter F 1.4 GM. This is also a lens that I absolutely love. And just as a general lens, the 50 millimeter focal length is amazing for weddings. That you can begin with the getting ready and you can go all the way into very low light reception coverage with an F 1.4 lens. And this 50 millimeter lens would be a great option for that. Well, I do love the 35. Unfortunately, it's a little bit too wide for me, especially during the reception if I have to get in tight for photographs during speeches. I don't wanna be three feet away from the person up on the podium and blocking family and friends from actually viewing what's going on and becoming the center of attention. So if I can be a little bit further away than that, that is my preference. I also have my C2 button on all of my Sony cameras set up to go into APS-C crop mode, which means if you're shooting something like this 50 millimeter lens and you hit that button, all of a sudden you're cropping in and you're turning your lens into something that's more like a 75 millimeter lens. And yes, you do lose some megapixels with that, but if you're shooting with a camera like the A7R Mark V, you're actually still getting 26 megapixels when you're in crop mode. Next, another lens that you have to have in your bag just as backup, it's a wider lens. So I have personally gone with the Sony 20 millimeter F 1.8 G. It is a lens that is absolutely always in my bag for wedding photography, but it's also a lens that I film a lot of my YouTube content with as well. It is important to have this wider lens in your bag in case you get into a situation where a 35 millimeter lens will just not do. And the Sony 20 millimeter F 1.8 G is amazing, but it is a little bit expensive for a prime lens that you're only going to use maybe a couple of times during a wedding day. If you're interested in getting a more budget-friendly version of a 20 millimeter lens, the Tamron 20 millimeter F 2.8 is also an incredible option. The other benefit of this Tamron lens, not only is it less expensive, but it is also smaller physically. So if you're someone like me who actually carries everything throughout an entire wedding day, I use the Peak Design Everyday Messenger, and that is the only bag that I bring, and it stays on my person throughout the entire wedding day. And because of this, I really do appreciate having less weight in my kit whenever possible. So the Tamron 20 millimeter F 2.8 is a great option. Going into more budget friendly options, the 50 millimeter F 1.8 is also an incredible option. I really enjoy this lens. It is small, it is inexpensive, and if you're just right now getting into the Sony ecosystem, it probably makes sense to be your first prime lens. And it's also very nice to just have as a backup as well, because it is important to have backup lenses in wedding photography. You know, that doesn't mean you have to buy two 50 millimeter F1.4s, but if you find that you shoot most of the day on the 50 millimeter F1.4, it might make sense to have a backup 50 millimeter F1.8 or something else that can get you through the day if the worst is to happen. Another budget friendly Sony lens that is a little bit more expensive, but in my opinion, worth every dollar 
is the Sony 85 millimeter F 1.8. This lens has actually replaced my Sony 85 millimeter F 1.4 GM, which is a lot more expensive and a lot heavier. This is a lens that I will typically find myself using during speeches as well as for introductions. I'm also going to give an honorable mention and a shout out here to the Sony 135 F 1.8 GM. It is also an incredible lens. For me personally, I find it to be just a little bit too long and I prefer something more like an 85 millimeter lens. That said, if you are a fan of the 135 millimeter focal length, it is an incredible option. The other benefit of Sony is how open they are to third party lenses. So there are a variety of lenses all available on Adorama and there is likely one that will both fit the millimeters that you desire as well as the price point. Now let's move into camera bodies. So I shoot with two camera bodies. I shoot a lot of prime lenses. I like to have my 35 millimeter F 1.4 GM on one of those camera bodies. And then on my other camera body, I will have usually the 50 millimeter F 1.4 or maybe the 85 F 1.8. Once we get to the ceremony, my main lens becomes the Tamron 35 to 150 F 2 to F 2.8. The cameras that I'm using, if I'm there for photography only coverage, my main camera will be the Sony A7R Mark V. This camera is amazing and while 60 megapixels is definitely overkill for weddings, its ability to go into APS-C crop mode and still give you 26 megapixels is amazing. The AI autofocus and the files that come off the camera, just absolutely phenomenal. The second camera I have with me is the Sony A7 IV. I would consider this to be maybe Sony's most general camera and it's very, very nice to use. If I am hired to do photography and video coverage, so I'll do a highlight film while also doing photography coverage, either just as myself or myself in a second, I will actually be using the Sony a7 IV as my main camera. The reason for this being that the buffer switches a lot faster from photo to video, the file size of the a7R Mark V obviously a lot bigger, higher megapixel camera. The Sony a7 IV, you can take a lot of raw photos and quickly switch and be recording in video mode. So this is one significant advantage for me personally, but if you're not doing photo and video coverage, this might not matter to you. And while the autofocus has been upgraded in the Sony a7R Mark V, the autofocus of the a7 IV is more than good enough for a wedding. So there it is, Sony lenses and cameras for wedding photographers, my opinions and the things that I use on a weekly basis out there in the world doing my wedding photographies. Thanks for watching here on Adorama TV. I'm Taylor Jackson and I'll see you again next time.